بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send people into this world and then he'll take them. And when people are gone, when we're gone or anybody is gone, then they leave behind things. There's been investment opportunities and sometimes they start benefiting from their investment. They leave behind good memories. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَن يُرِدِ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيْرًا إِسْتَعْمَلَهُ Whoever does a good deed, whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves good for, wants good for, he will use him, he will employ him. The Sahaba said, what does that exactly mean? What do you mean employ him? So the Prophet sallallahu said that before his death, he'll give him the ability to do something by which the people around him can be pleased with him. So if somebody's died from this world and there's multiple people remembering him, Sending du'as for them Speaking well about them Maybe even building a masjid for them In their name For their isal thawab To donate the reward for them Then isn't that a well worth where A life well worth Lived as such A life well lived We can only know after our death Have we done enough for that kind of thing So today You know as people die There's people who touch you and uh, we remember them. And the only reason for this is to talk about some godly people, some people, Rabbani people, people who uh, did things for the sake of Allah, served the deen essentially so that we all pray for them. So this is a person who, when I joined the Darul Ulum in Bury in 1985, November 1985, very young age, 11 or 12, half, 11 and a half or so. This particular individual, Maulana Ali, his name was Mayat, he was the administrator in the office. And he was pretty much there until I finished 11 years later. And then he was there for many, many, like three decades or so, or four decades or however, three decades. And he just passed away a few days ago. Now, mashallah, he left behind uh, children. And mashallah, I know at least two of them who are ulama and they're doing some good work. Um, so I remember him today because I think I need to pay him back For all the good that he did for the Darul Uloom For the students and many other people And then myself as well As a student there So he starts off uh, He was born in Mozambique Which is a, a country just above South Africa in, uh, in Africa And then he went to study in the late 70s Early 80s, late 70s He was in Binori Town, Pakistan Which was one of the great madrasas there and he studied under Shaykh Yusuf bin Nuri, rahimahullah, one of the great uh, ulama of Pakistan and who was part of that, uh, established that madrasa there. And when he was there, he, mashallah, as a, uh, he was a foreigner, but he had the opportunity to be the khadim, the main khadim uh, of service to Shaykh Yusuf. So he must have received a lot of du'as from him. He was the one in charge of doing a lot of things. Sometimes others would want to do it and he was such a humble figure. He's like, okay, you do it. And it looks like on one occasion, somebody didn't do something right. So Sheikh Yusuf even said to them that, why don't you just let him do it if you can't do it right? SubhanAllah, you know, some people you just hit it off with and they just do things right. They just balance, they're just on par. And he was like that. Uh, he was uh, either class fellows or one year below or ahead of Mufti Zarwali Khan Sahib, who just passed away. Big Mufti of Pakistan, mashallah, and Allama. So they used to play together. They used to play together. They were students together. And Mufti Zawri says that I used to try to go and do khidmah of Mawlana Yusuf, but I couldn't. Because, you know, uh, Mawlana Ali was just always ahead in that regard. Although Mawlana Ali says, obviously, Mufti Zawri used to always come first and second in class. He was very, very clever and intelligent. So I remember him since 1985, and he had a lot of pressure. Yeah, he, he dealt with a lot of things. He was the administrator of a big Darul Ulum, so dealing with all sorts of things, I remember. And then we'd go and say, oh, can you do this for us? We need this, we need that. And you could see he was always had this look on his face where he was always busy. You know, some people, they just look always busy and like, oh, what do you want? But such a heart that even though he spoke to you like that sometimes, you knew he'd get your job done because he was just always on trying to do something. Um, he 
hails from this little village called Surkhai, which is close to where my parents uh, came from. So our family, I think, knew his family and he was married. I used to go to visit my auntie in Blackburn uh, in the Audley Range area. And I would see him sometimes outside his father-in-law's shop called the Dorat shop or the Dorat stores. It's on that Queen's Road or Queen's Park Road or something. If anybody's been to Blackburn, they've seen it. So he used to actually help out there as well. He used to also be there to lead the prayer sometimes in the local masjid as well. And genuinely a helpful person. That's what I remember. Genuinely. I just remember that look on his face, but he would always get things done. You know, we are from London. So Darul Ulum Bari was about four to four and a half hours away for us. We used to only come back to London four times a year. The locals there, they used to go home more frequently, they used to get food from home, they used to get their clothing washed from home, they used to get food sent from home. We, four times a year, we got a bit of pocket money and, you know, madrasa life, that's, that's how it was. So we had to wash our own clothes. So I remember, you know, when you're 11, 12 years old, you're washing your own clothes. It's kind of crazy. You don't know what you're doing. So I'd learned that what you do is you put your clothes in a bucket, sorry, you get some water, you put a bit of soap powder in there, you mix it up, hot water, and then you put your clothes in there and you let it soak for a while. Right, for two, three hours because it loosens the dirt, then you take them and then you scrub them and dry them. Oh man, it was, every stage of that was kind of crazy. Sometimes you'd put it there and you'd forgot. So it stays for two, three, four days, you go back and they're smelling bad. So you have to redo the whole thing. I remember once I had a really nice top, and uh, I was very excited about it. I washed it for the first time, came and put it on a radiator to dry. And it got all rust marks on it that could not be taken off. <laughs> you know, in those days when you get your first kind of... In those days, people didn't have the kind of money that kids have today. Right? This Mullah Ali, there was one occasion where he started taking some students' clothes in these black bags to Blackburn to some laundrette. And getting them washed and bringing them back. I still remember that and I really pray for him. Because... During that phase, it just became a bit easier because you didn't have to wash your own clothes. So we just send the clothes and he would take it in his car. He didn't have to. This was not part of his job, but he was just such a helpful person, mashallah. Just such a helpful person. So um, that's all I want to say. Uh, that's all I want to say. Allah reward him abundantly. And I'm just hoping that I believe that he has a status with Allah. That's what I believe because mashallah, so many people are praying for him and uh, his janazah had a lot of people as well and there's people are remembering and there's people who've started a project to build a masjid for him that people can donate to we'll put a link up online for that as well and inshallah he's got an status with Allah so I mentioned that here number one for us to make dua for him and number two that we pray to Allah that we can also be fondly remembered that we also do decent things in this life and good things and uh, Allah protect us from the disgrace of this world and especially the disgrace of this of the hereafter and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can accept us and that we can be remembered with the du'as of people uh, and good fond memories after we go as well. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen Allah bless him and grant sabr jameel to all of his family and loved ones and allow uh, all of us to also leave uh, a good memory behind and good children. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. The point of a lecture is to encourage people to act, to get further, an inspiration, an encouragement, persuasion. The next step is to actually start learning seriously, to read books, to take on a subject of Islam and to understand all the subjects of Islam, at least at their basic level, so that we can become more aware of what our deen wants from us. Uh, and that's why we started uh, Rayyan courses, so that uh, you can actually take organized lectures uh, on demand whenever you have free time, especially, for example, the Islamic Essentials uh, course that we have on there, the Islamic Essentials Certificate, which you take 20 short modules. And at the end of that, inshallah, you will have gotten the, the basics of uh, most of the most important topics in Islam, and you'll feel a lot more confident. You don't have to leave lectures behind. You can continue to, leave, uh, you know, to listen to lectures, but you need to have this more sustained study as well. Jazakallah khair and assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.